Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Warner, Vice Provost for Admissions and Financial Aid here at Lehigh. And I want to start by saying congratulations to uh, all of the admitted students who are joining us uh, this evening. We were honored to receive your applications to Lehigh, excited to be able to extend an offer of admission to you. Uh, and we've enjoyed interacting with you over the last three weeks or so on these new virtual platforms that uh, that we've created to replace the on-campus events that of course we're, we're not able to hold at the, at the moment. Um, if you've not already joined our um, admitted student community online, I encourage you to do that. We have lots of students who've already done that, but if you haven't, please do that and, and we can interact with you in lots of, of different ways. Um, I also want to share that this is something of a, a bittersweet time uh, for those of us in the admissions world. It's, it's a very sweet time because this is the time that, that we get to meet and interact with the people who will literally be the future of Lehigh University. And that's very, very rewarding, very exciting. Um, it's a little bit bitter for us because this is also the time of year that those of us in admissions realize that you don't have much use for us anymore. And what's worse yet, you're not afraid of us anymore. Um, but the good news is that the folks that you do have use for, the people that will be uh, integral parts of your academic life at Lehigh, are here this evening um, to talk with you, to answer your questions. Uh, and, and I'm uh, very excited to be a part of, uh, of, of this panel. Um, and I, I, I want to mention that I, Lehigh is the fifth university that I've worked for in my uh, career. And at none of the other places would we have uh, gotten agreement from the president and the deans of the undergraduate colleges to be a part of a panel like this. And this is something that's really uh, special about Lehigh, um, the, the direct contact that you're going to have with, with leadership uh, at the highest level. Our program tonight is, is pretty straightforward. In a moment, I'll introduce President Simon. He will, in turn, introduce the deans. Uh, and President Simon, by virtue of his office, will get to ask the first couple of questions of the deans. Uh, and then after that, um, I will ask, uh, ask them all to answer questions that have either been submitted in advance or that you're asking uh, live here through the question and answer feature of this webinar. So send your questions on. Um, and to start off, I, I want to introduce uh, President John Simon, who is an internationally renowned chemist, a distinction that preceded his appointment as Lehigh's 14th president in July of 2015. And shortly after coming to Lehigh, he launched an ambitious plan to grow the undergraduate population by 1,000 new students, the graduate population by 500 new students, to diversify the Lehigh population in all measures, racial and ethnic, geographic, uh, et cetera, and to add uh, an additional college um, to the Lehigh family of colleges, the College of Health. And you'll hear uh, more about the College of Health, uh, I'm sure, from, from Dean Witt uh, later this evening. He's also expanded Lehigh's presence to the West Coast, entering into a partnership with NASDAQ for Lehigh to be the exclusive Entrepreneurial Center partner of NASDAQ out in uh, San Francisco. Um, and President Simon also has the most popular Instagram account at Lehigh, at Prez Simon. Join it, uh, you won't be sorry. With that, I'll turn things over to, uh, to President Simon and to our deans. Thanks, Dan. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's interesting because every uh, year around this time, Dan and I get to go around and welcome uh, prospective students and their parents. And not only do you get to see us, but we get to see you. And uh, this is a very interesting venue because uh, I get to see my colleagues and none of you. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, congratulations on your admissions to Lehigh. And I want to thank all the parents that are joining us tonight as well. Tonight you'll have an opportunity to hear from the deans of our four undergraduate colleges, business, engineering, arts and sciences, and health. We also have a college of education. It offers a variety of professional programs and undergraduates are able to take courses in that college as well. 
I think the discussion tonight will reveal uh, the intellectual and caring community that is Lehigh. And before we get started, uh, I actually want to share with you and the other parents that are in the audience, um, I'm also a Lehigh parent. I'm a proud parent of a graduate in electrical engineering, the class of 2019. And when I look back, oh, probably about five and a half years ago now, the reason Evan chose Lehigh was he was excited about the exceptional academic experience that he would get. He was really enamored with the fact that he could live 24 seven in our maker spaces. And he was intrigued by what he could take across a curriculum that was outside of engineering. And over his four years, I watched him explore that curriculum and ended up taking a variety of theater classes, which if I had predicted when he entered college would never have happened. So to all of you considering coming to Lehigh, expect to be challenged. Expect that Lehigh will engage you and expect that it will help you find your own unique passions and path for your future. So with that said, I'd like to get uh, going with our deans here and I'd like to uh, perhaps call on them one by one uh, to share with you three distinctive qualities that they see of their college. And I think I'll start with uh, Georgette Phillips, who is the Dean of Lehigh Business. Thanks so much, John. Almost forgot to unmute myself and turn myself into an internet meme. Um, let me add my congratulations to all of you. It is a wonderful time of the year for you when you get to make a decision that you've been working for for so long. So let me add my congratulations and hope that we can see each other very soon on campus. The three things that I would point out that are unique to what we do at Lehigh Business, the first is our innovative core curriculum. We recently revised the core curriculum and amongst the, the many things that we did, the one that I'm most excited about is we wove technology education throughout our curriculum. It doesn't matter what your major is going to be, you are going to learn about programming, you're going to learn about business applications for information systems, and you're going to learn data visualization. We like to say that the business college sits in the intersection of business and technology. And through this core curriculum, we give you the opportunity to go as deep or as broad as you want in that intersection. The second innovative feature of our college is a cross collaboration. I think that you'll probably hear the word interdisciplinary many times this evening. You might have even heard it from other people, but I gotta tell you, at Lehigh, we do it in a way that I've not seen other places do it. But specifically within the college, we have two certificates that cross all five, six, sorry, we have a new department. Um, all six of our departments. Um, data analytics is one such cert certificate, and the other certificate is international business. And the third is something that, that President Simon alluded to. We have partnered with the NASDAQ Center in San Francisco to offer what we call our Startup Academy. In this program, we take 12 to 16 students, undergraduate students, to San Francisco each summer. We pair them up with startups and they learn what it is like to live in that world. It is a marvelous, marvelous opportunity. Some people say, my gosh, I never knew I would love it so much. Some people say, yeah, I think that I'm gonna hold off on the entrepreneurship startup world for just a minute, but that's okay. Cause that's what college is all about, exploring opportunities. So in brief, those are three things that are offered at Lehigh Business that you find you would not find in other undergraduate business programs. Thank you, Georgette. We'll now go to Steve Doerr, who is the Dean of the Rosslyn College of Engineering. Thank you, John, and welcome everyone. So I, as I was thinking about what three features of education, of engineering education at Lehigh stand out the most, I think that 
Lehigh uh, engineering education is experiential, it's research-based, and it's interdisciplinary. George, I promised you that others would talk about interdisciplinary. Um, so first of all, it's experiential. And I think this is, this is so important in today's engineering education, the idea that students connect with the core material they're learning through experiential opportunities where they get to do hands-on learning, where they get to tie those basic concepts they're learning in their classes together, and ultimately get to find their passion as learners and as engineers, and start to think about where does that take them when they go out into their careers. And we have so many opportunities, both inside our curriculum, we have an amazing capstone design, and we have experiential learning peppered throughout the curriculum, but we also have great opportunities outside. Um, we have these, this mountaintop initiative on campus, and that's not a Rawson College initiative. It's a university initiative, but our students get so much out of working in teams with other students on hard problems that really make an impact on the world. So that's one, experiential. The next one is research-based. We are a research university, and our faculty in the Rawson College are outstanding researchers. And so you will have a chance to learn from those people, to to work with those people to see how they think. And over a third of our students actually actively work in, in research labs on campus, uh, working directly with faculty members and graduate students to create knowledge for the future. And then the third I said is, you know, echoing back to Georgette, is interdisciplinary. And uh, we do have, so we have a number of interdisciplinary programs that cross colleges at Lehigh. I think we do undergraduate interdisciplinary education as well as any place I've seen, these programs that really bring students together across business and engineering or across arts and sciences and engineering. And yes, Whitney, eventually we'll, we'll get the programs across, uh, across health and engineering. I know they're coming soon. So, uh, so we have these opportunities, but also our students have the opportunities to be interdisciplinary, even if they're not in those programs, to take courses from, from Lehigh Business, to participate in both courses. We take a lot of courses from arts and sciences, but also in activities that tie there. Lehigh engineers make up 40% of the marching band, almost 50% of the choir. Our students get involved beyond just engineering and beyond just sciences to really be broad human beings at the base of being outstanding engineers. Thank you, Steve. Now we'll move on to Bob Flowers, who is Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Hi, I'd like to welcome everyone and congratulations. Um, I'm sorry I can't meet you in person, but I guess, you know, in these times this will have to do. So I'd really like to talk about, I think, what are the three unique uh, aspects of the College of Arts and Sciences at Lehigh. And I think the first thing I'd like to talk about, and it's related to some things that um, Steve and Georgette talked about, but it's really the unique student experience. And I would say we provide an experience at all levels of education that can't be matched by either a traditional liberal arts institution or a large public research intensive university. We're a central part of the university with outstanding colleges and engineering business and health and exceptional research programs and scholarly activity across a wide range of disciplines from philosophy to political science and theater to physics and mathematics. And I think what distinguishes the education in these disciplines is that students in all programs have close interaction with faculty and they have the ability to be integral part in the creation of knowledge, not just getting facts disseminated by faculty. I mean, our students are actively engaged. And that leads me into the second point, which is the high level of student engagement. Over 90% of our students in the College of Arts and Sciences are involved in internship and experiential learning, which includes research. A good percentage of our students actually publish their work in peer-reviewed journals, and this places them well uh, if they want to move on to a professional school or on to uh, their careers. Um, well over 50% have studied abroad or also have an international experience within the college. And well over 50% of our students are involved in the visual and performing arts. And I think Steve alluded to this a little bit as well, that um, our majors in theater or art architecture and design also are majoring in computer science and engineering or in marketing in, in, in the business school. And so that, that's something that's actually quite unique. And I have experience at other institutions and it, it, it's really something special about Lehigh. And tied into that is, 
uh, nearly 25% um, of our majors are actually a double major. And so these include, you can double major in a program like health medicine and society and global studies. But as I mentioned earlier, many of our uh, students are also majors in disciplines in business and engineering. Finally, the third thing that I really think is unique here in the College of Arts and Sciences, but at Lehigh in general, is the degree of faculty engagement with students. Our faculty are internationally recognized scholars. For example, Ben Wright in Religion Studies is an internationally recognized expert in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, Patrick Connolly and Rosalind Weiss in Philosophy, who recently received prestigious fellowships from the National Endowment for the Humanities, are actively engaged with students. And Xiaoji Zhu in chemistry, who's a Sloan Fellow, Beckman Scholar, and National Science Foundation Career Award winner. And the reason I mention these faculty in particular is they all teach freshman seminar and first year courses. So as an entering first year student, you have the ability to interact with internationally recognized scholars. And I don't believe this is something that you would find at many institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. This year, we'll actually enroll our first students into the College of Health, and I'd like to introduce Whitney Witt, who is the inaugural Dean of the College of Health. Thank you, President Simon, and I want to extend my congratulations to all of you who've been admitted. Um, congratulations and um, welcome. Uh, the three things that make the College of Health uh, distinct, um, the first is that we are um, unique and that we offer the first um, degree in population health with a focus on health innovation and technology. And population health is the science of understanding why some people are healthy and others aren't. Um, and there's an increasing awareness that non-clinical factors like education, income, and where people live have a major impact on health. Um, we are also in the era of big data. We now have access to a growing abundance of data on the factors that produce health. However, there's really a lack of data scientists who know how to analyze these data and make it applicable to policymakers, healthcare providers, insurance, insurance uh, companies, and the public. And that's where you all come in. Um, our students will be able to meet this demand for data scientists and health. And you'll be prepared uh, to meet that need, but you'll also be developing strong research and critical thinking skills um, that will be useful in any health profession. Uh, I would say the cornerstone of our approach is experiential education, which you've heard um, from my colleagues. And that means you'll have the opportunity to work alongside our faculty and our partner organizations to apply what you're learning in real time. And then finally, our focus on health innovation and technology will create the tools to augment uh, our understanding um, of uh, you know, decision making. It will also incorporate uh, vigorous uh, humanist perspectives um, to make data science outcomes more accessible uh, so that we can tell the stories of the lived human experience through verbal and visual narrative inspiring action and change and making an impact on the world. Thank you, Whitney. So I think we'll do a, a brief second round. Um, I'm gonna ask people to keep their questions short so that we can get to all the questions that are streaming in on the Q&A list. Uh, I'm gonna go back to Georgette Phillips of Lee Business. And Georgette, um, I've heard you say uh, to me many times that Lehigh Business is at the intersection of business and technology. So what do you mean by that? As we enter, as our students enter the business world, they are going into a world that is ever changing, ever, the technology impact cannot be understated. And that is our role to prepare students to go into this world. We can do this in many different ways. We can do it very intensively we, with our degrees in computer science and business and the degree in um, business and engineering. We can do it in a less intensive way, which is our um, major in business information systems. But wh whatever you do, you are always, always going to have to be facile in technology. And I think that we are in a unique position because you see a lot of business schools now touting their uh, technology credentials. 
Well, you know what? It's in our blood. It's in our DNA. So even if you want to major in marketing, you have to know technology. If you want to major in finance, you have to know technology. If you want to major in accounting, you have to know technology. I think that this positions our graduates and our college to stay not only with the curve, but actually ahead of the curve where the business world is going. Thanks, Georgia. Steve. So let's take a trip in down into engineering here. Uh, what trends in engineering education is Lehigh pursuing to prepare students for the future? Thanks, John. I, uh, I think this is the most exciting time in our lifetimes in terms of changes in engineering education. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be a dean at this time. So I think one of the biggest things that, that we're really seeing happening is we're the educational process is moving away from a faculty-centric teaching environment to a student-centric learning environment where the students kind of own their own learning and really are able to, to push forward and go in directions that they want to go. Ultimately, our job is to send you on the path for the rest of your career. We need to send you out with that ability to really be able to to manage your own learning and to control it and to move it forward. So that's really important. And I think that the flip side of this is that our, our education, I, I talked about experiential learning before, and I think that's really the centerpiece, but it's very impact focused as well. So we uh, were really looking at, students come to us now saying, we want to make an impact while we're at Lehigh, while we're students. And we provide them with opportunities to do that, to, to work on real world problems where they can have a real world impact. And ultimately our goal is to send out uh, alumni, graduates who go out and have an impact on the world. So it, it just makes great sense that we would give them opportunities to make an impact while they're at Lehigh. Thanks, Steve. Bob. Why is it important to have a liberal arts education today? Okay, I'm, I'm happy to answer that uh, question. As you know, we were both trained in uh, liberal arts uh, colleges. So I'll talk about it in the Lehigh context. And I, I would argue that in its purest form, a liberal arts education at Lehigh is based on nurturing intellectual practices that enable you to synthesize facts and material, learn on your own, to engage new concepts and questions, and to make informed decisions. And ideally, this is an education that's going to prepare you for the career and life changes you will encounter, the jobs that haven't been created yet, and a life of informed citizenship based on facts and reasoned arguments. And I think with more than 60 distinct academic programs, you can address important questions ranging from the very origins of the universe to United States immigration policy, view social justice issues through a theatrical lens, and investigate subjects such as cultural and political responses to climate change. Regardless of which discipline you pursue in, in arts and sciences or in a liberal arts education, the approach really remains the same. We endow our students with two elements critical for success, knowledge and humanity. We teach students how to think creatively, but also to recognize what they do not know so that ideally education and enlightenment become a lifelong pursuit. As a consequence, a liberal arts education is intellectually deep and interdisciplinary. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. And Whitney, why a College of Health now? And what careers can make an impact on a global pandemic like we're experiencing today? I just want to say that planning for the College of Health has been underway for many years. Um, it is an unfortunate coincidence that we are enrolling our first class of students during a historic pandemic. However, the COVID-19 pandemic both confirms and elevates the importance of population health and Lehigh's focus on this new field. Uh, tracking pandemics like COVID-19 um, really underscores the critical importance of timely and accurate data and the use of sophisticated analytics to monitor and predict the path of these kinds of diseases. And we're developing new technologies to help analyze COVID-19 and other relevant data from artificial intelligence and multi-level modeling to data visualization. 
these analytics can be used to inform how we prevent the spread of COVID-19, potentially saving the lives of millions of people from premature death, both here in the U.S. and around the globe. A pandemic like COVID-19 touches nearly um, all aspects of health and healthcare, and the most direct impact on imp pandemics will come from data scientists and epidemiologists who track the spread of infection to develop models to help inform decision makers. We also see impact from health policy experts, community researchers, uh, and environmental scientists who can examine the causes and consequences of COVID-19 across the population as a whole and the disparities that we see in vulnerable populations. Thank you, Whitney. Dan, it's back to you. All right, great. Well, thank you all. Um, that was a great uh, kind of start to our program. We have more than four dozen uh, questions that have already come in. So uh, I'm not sure if we'll get to all of them. I'm going to try to bundle them together by categories. So hopefully we'll touch on all the issues that people are, are interested in. Um, not terribly a surprise. Uh, one of the most uh, commonly asked questions so far has been about our remote learning environment. Um, the, so here's a question, how, how did going to online classes this semester go? What worked and what didn't? Um, Dean Flowers, would you like to take a shot at that? Yeah, actually, I think things went exceptionally well. In fact, I don't believe it could have gone any better. I think because of our entrepreneurial spirit, we were able to move nearly 1,000 classes online within one week at Lehigh. It placed us in among the top 10% of universities who were able to move online so quickly. And I think what was a benefit here is that our library and technology services work with students and faculty to make sure their technical needs were met. Oftentimes we think about the uh, exchange between uh, faculty and students. We have staff here that are highly dedicated to the success of students. Um, the other thing that worked was faculty showed great flexibility working with students who had challenges. We were able to record labs and supply data so that students were able to complete laboratory experiences. And in some cases, some of our, what I would call our more entrepreneurial colleagues were able to use uh, virtual reality technology to make the uh, experience more realistic. Um, my one colleague used what's an Oculus platform. And so students who had the, the uh, VR technology could actually get in and look around some of the labs in, in a three-dimensional way. And so I, I really think it went exceptionally well. I do think there were some challenges too. One challenge was getting some faculty used to teaching online who maybe didn't have that experience. But after an initial week and a lot of uh, assistance from our colleagues in library and technology service, services, I think things have gone very well. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm stunned how well it went, I'll just be honest. <laughs> if I can follow okay, up just great. a moment on what Bob said. Please do. Um, I just want to say, I have to call out our students on this too. We have amazing students. The resilience of our student body, while they went through all of these challenges with us, they were partners in making this all work. And so I just want all of you to know, you come to Lehigh, your peers are going to, you know, they're going to challenge you, they're going to excite you, and they are an amazing group of people. Okay, great. And um, th perhaps the next most popular question on a, on a similar vein is forward looking. Uh, is there a chance that you'll be online in the fall? Um, what would that look like and how do you uh, assure the same quality of, of education? And I, I think probably President Simon, I, I'm going to put you on the spot for this one. Yeah, you, you don't think I can delegate it to a dean? <laughs> So, uh, so it's certainly our hope that we'll be back on campus this fall. Uh, that said, um, just watching the evolution of the pandemic and federal and state regulations, uh, we're planning for a range of scenarios because actually we just don't know what the future holds. So my approach to it is that we have to be flexible and we have to be prepared to meet the challenges ahead and whatever that brings. But at Lehigh, we're determined that, uh, that all of our students will get an exceptional academic experience with the, whichever form we have to deliver it in when fall comes. 
All right, uh, great. So there are um, lots of questions as well about um, research opportunities and experiential learning opportunities, um, how available they are, how students go about finding them, how early students can be engaged with them. Dean DeWorth, could you speak to those questions? We, we do have, a, we have many opportunities for both research and experiential learning and they're growing all the time. And I'll tell you, as, as Dean of Engineering, my, one of my top goals is to make sure that every student in our college has access both inside and outside the curriculum to meaningful experiential learning opportunities. And I think they are there. So I mentioned earlier the mountaintop uh, um, program on campus and uh, the creative inquiry that goes with that. And we just, we have student teams that are working all over the world on really hard problems, working with people where they live, helping to solve problems for them. We've got, sorry, can you still hear me? My, uh, uh, my computer just went off there for a moment. But uh, we, uh, we have opportunities in research labs because of the kind of uh, university that we are, and Bob was mentioning this earlier, that we really do value undergraduates in the research experience and so getting our our faculty members and our in our graduate students interact with undergrads all the time and so i think any undergrad who wants an experience in a research lab can get it and get it early we have a lot of we have freshmen who are involved in all this matter of fact i feel like we have to tell our students that first summer after your after your very first year use that creatively because there's just so many opportunities. If you miss that, you've only got two summers left. And summer oftentimes is a great time to take that internet, you know, be part of an international team or, or do other things. So I think that we find these opportunities to plug students in all, you know, kind of all throughout their four years at Lehigh. Can I build on that for just a moment? Because Please. a lot of business students don't see you know, what is this research aspect? What is this experiential learning? I'm gonna put it in a vernacular that may be more familiar to you, but really is the same thing. And that's your internships. That you get the opportunity to apply what you've learned. I think that one of the most exciting opportunities you have as a Lehigh undergraduate are what we call our Iacocca Institute um, International Internships. Unfortunately, on hiatus this summer, but when they come back, this is an, an incredible opportunity to go and work in another country and for pay. I mean, this is not an unpaid internship. So not only do you get to apply what you've learned in the classroom by going to work, you know, students have worked at um, accounting firms in, in Italy. They've worked at tech firms in Australia. They, I mean, they have worked at banks in China. All of these places where you can get your placements in an international setting and apply what you have been learning during your undergraduate career. So oftentimes these students do that between their second and third year. And then after their third year, they take the internship that will then eventually lead to their permanent job. Can, can I follow up on just one minor point? I think the thing that amazed me when I, when I got to Lehigh is how flexible we are about this as well. So I've had, um, I was a, a faculty member before I was a dean, and I would have students from engineering come and work in my lab, or I'm trained as a chemist, but I would have biology students. And we talk about interdisciplinary, but our students really do engage this. And, Another thing that really impressed me about the students is even in majors where there's not a research or experience requirement, probably 80% of them participate anyway. I mean, it, it's just very impressive to me. And that's a great uh, segue, Dean Flowers. There, there are a number of questions about students who have interest in, in double majoring, in um, taking courses outside of their home college, in potentially changing colleges um, so if you could maybe talk more about that inter those interdisciplinary opportunities and opportunities for students to, uh, to to change and there are also some questions specifically for 
uh, Dean Witt about the College of Health and how um, you plan for the, curricular, the curriculum and for students to be able to interact with the other colleges. So would you like, would you like me to go first? And sure, why don't you start off? Yeah. So um, I think it's relatively straightforward. In fact, the Lord, like I said, a large percentage of our students do have double majors. I would say the predominant college where I see double majors and sharing is in the College of Engineering, uh, but we also have business. We have a large number of uh, business majors who are also in the theater program for art, architecture, and design. And transferring colleges here is really straightforward. Um, I think, I'm not sure exactly what the timeline is, but typically within the first year is when we see the most transfer between um, colleges. But uh, dub double, I've even seen triple majors. <laughs> and so, um, but, but this, this, is really com this is really common at Lehigh. I'll, I'll turn it over to Whitney now. Sure, um, this is a great question. So the, the BSN population health has a tremendous amount of flexibility built into the curriculum. So there are a lot of free electives. Um, and so if you want to explore different, you know, intellectual options, you can do so while still balancing the goal of making progress in the degree program. The other thing I will say is that we are developing a suite of certificate programs uh, two of which will be uh, rolling out this fall. One is a certificate in population health, and the other is a certificate in global population health. And these are really for students in the other colleges. Um, so students in business or in engineering or College of Arts and Sciences who want to get um, some, some uh, you know, experience um, in the, the field of population health while they're at Lehigh, um, and they'll take a number of courses um, for the Global Population Health uh, Certificate Program. We do have a requirement um, that there is a field placement, um, typically abroad, um, but it could be at the UN here in the US. Um, so we, we offer a lot of flexibility um, within our own program, but also we are really looking to expand our portfolio of options um, in collaboration with the other colleges. Yeah, Dan, I think this would be a good time to remind people of our cross-university minors. The, the, um, and if I miss any, I'm sure my colleagues will, will back me up here. The um, ones that I'm thinking about are in real estate and in entrepreneurship. So that these minors are open to students in all of the undergraduate colleges and they have classes in all of the undergraduate colleges. And so, you don't have to transfer to you know from one college to another to get that intercollegiate experience. Yeah, Gr great point. And there are there are lots of other uh, disciplines offered as minors, and you can go to our website to see the list. I know there's a uh, a question here today about journalism as a minor. Uh, my understanding is that is something that is available to students. Um, so there's the answer to, to the person that asked that question. Um, we're approaching a um, hundred questions now. Um, some of them are very specific about particular programs. There was a question about broadcast journalism, cognitive science, psychology. I encourage you to go into the admitted student community to ask those very specific questions and get that detailed information or to visit our website. And just because of our limited time, I'm going to try to um, target the questions that are a little bit more broadly uh, focused. And there's another one for, for Dean Witt about um, what do you imagine would be the, the kinds of professions, the kinds of jobs, the kinds of companies that students graduating from the College of Health would pursue? Great question. Um, well, I, I, there are a lot of, lot of possibilities, uh, really in every sector. So the private sector, um, that includes consulting firms, um, it includes pharmaceutical companies, um, government uh, is another option um, for employment. Um, there is a great need at the, at the local, state, federal, and even global level uh, for data scientists in health to be able to analyze um, health data to be able to inform policy. Um, also, I think some of our students um, will go on um, to pursue uh, degrees in, in higher education. 
um, perhaps a medical degree or um, another clinical degree. Um, and then finally, nonprofits, I think, are also a place where um, our students could uh, find employment. There are a lot of professional societies that are looking for data scientists um, to help them link their data to some of the social and environmental determinants of health. Um, you know, the American Heart Association, March of Dimes, um, many of these uh, many of these organizations um, have a lot of data about um, particular populations, but have not looked at the full range of factors that we know affect health. So I think there are a lot of possibilities and um, there's certainly um, a big demand for, um, for these skills. Okay, great. Uh, there are also a number of questions about study abroad and some of them are about specific disciplines or specific locations. And again, I'd encourage you to go to uh, to the admitted student community and, and ask those questions. That, that's a great forum for that. But there are also a number of questions about um, whether study abroad is compatible with uh, engineering and students majoring in the sciences. So perhaps Dean uh, DeWorth and Dean Flowers, if you could talk about, uh, about study abroad matching with, say, engineering. Well, as you probably know, engineering curricula tend to be pretty rigorous and all en encompassing. So I understand why people ask this question, but it is possible actually to do a semester abroad while studying engineering at Lehigh. It takes some, it takes some careful planning, but it is, it's possible. But I want to raise something else. You know, I think semester abroad is great, but we have so many other international opportunities at Lehigh, as I was mentioning earlier, to do projects and to go spend time actually, you know, having an impact somewhere um, and so that's another opportunity to do, to have a real meaningful international experience while uh, being a, a Lehigh engineer. To you, Bob. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just second what uh, Steve said. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we really uh, enjoy at Lehigh is creative inquiry. And so a lot of these international experiences that students have or over the summer, and I think Steve talked about this a little earlier, where you're actually really working with people where they live in different venues. But in, in the sciences as well, we have many um, agreements with institutions in other countries, and so we really work hard to make it work for students. And I think that's, that's the one thing, again, that I really love about being at Lehigh is the flexibility that we have um, with students. And so um, we typically, um, we work with students to make these opportunities that are available to you work for you within your curriculum. And, and I should say, Dan, that we, over a third of our engineering students have some kind of meaningful international experience while they're at Lehigh. So it's not just a small fraction. Great, great. Um, so here's a question that may be uh, best for President Simon. Uh, I mes mentioned in my introduction uh, of you about the, about the growth. And um, uh, someone has a question about uh, how do we plan to achieve that growth, but maintain um, the quality and the overall small classes intimate feel of the university, which I thought was a, a great question. Yeah, so the, uh, the growth is a, a change from approximately 5,000 to 6,000 undergraduates. Um, I've actually had experience at schools in the 6,000 plus range. And, and I fully believe you can deliver the same type of uh, individual experiences that we do at Lehigh. Uh, the uh, side of the growth plan attached to the faculty was to add an additional 100 positions to the faculty, uh, 50 of which would be in the College of Health, and the other 50 would be uh, competed for <laughs> by some of the deans that are on the uh, the, the call with us today. So uh, I, I think if you get much bigger than that, then you could start to have concerns about uh, being able to deliver on the types of research experiences and other experiential learning opportunities that we have. But I think with the anticipated growth in both facilities, faculty, and student body, uh, it actually will become a richer experience because we'll be able to offer a more uh, varied set of experiences to the students. Hey, great. 
Um, there are also a number of questions here about um, life after Lehigh and um, what we're doing to prepare students for, for jobs and the companies that are recruiting on campus. There, there was a question about some of the statistics and I, I actually will go on and share that we're very proud that we have been um, remarkably consistent that 95% uh, of our graduates within six months of graduation have either uh, uh, found gainful employment or uh, found themselves in graduate school. So um, our, our track record of success is, is right there. But um, Dean Phillips, I know that you're very involved with the companies that are recruiting um, students on campus. Maybe you can start and others can, can join in sure. uh, uh, with their thoughts. Sure, I have to give a real shout out at this point to our Lehigh alumni because while our career services folks do an excellent job of placing students in both internships and full-time employment, a lot of these um, relationships are predicated upon our alums. And this is one thing that makes Lehigh very special because a Lehigh alum always takes the call. It starts in a student's first year as a Lehigh business undergraduate where there is a class called Business One and one of your tasks in this class is to not figure out what you want to major in, but to try to figure out what kind of jobs, what kind of careers are open to you, and reach out to Lehigh alums that are in those careers, not for a job, but simply just to get more information. And we have been heartened by the number of Lehigh alums that say, sure, I'll talk to you for a half an hour about what I do, and it's all about learning. One of our goals here is to have the student placed not in a job, but in a career. Where do they think, the first step of where they think they want to spend their life. And we deliver on that promise in a way that I am extraordinarily proud of. From our faculty who connect our students with um, careers in Wall Street, in healthcare, um, in accounting, in marketing, you, know, you name it we have our faculty that have their, their connections to, as I was intimating before, our career services office that does a spectacular job in connecting students with opportunities. Great. Anyone else want to jump in there or should we move on? I'd, I'd like to just jump in for a moment because I think that's the other unique thing at Lehigh. It's not just mentoring from faculty, but from pre-professional staff, career advisors, and alumni. Oftentimes our alumni are excited to come back to campus. Um, we have many visiting lectures. We had Charlie Dent recently speak at Lehigh. He spent his whole day here meeting individually with students talking about um, potential careers and things. And, and so um, you join an expansive, enthusiastic network of alumni that span from broad, Broadway to Wall Street, to the US Department of State, to Amazon, the Washington Post, and Teach for America. And so again, I, this is just to amplify some of the things that uh, Georgette talked about, but it's really our alumni who are really engaged. And, and again, they always take the call. I, I would agree with that, it's fantastic. Yeah, if I could add just, just one more thing. We are a university that's situated in the Northeastern United States, but we are a university that places our students globally. Um, and I am especially thrilled with the connection that we've made in San Francisco of getting our students with the startups. Actually, you know what, there, there's two San Francisco connections with NASDAQ. The first one is um, Lehigh Silicon Valley, which happens in January and the students go out and they are um, split into different treks and we can go into that more depth than in, in a, at another time. But then there's also in the Startup Academy with the specific internships where they are placed with a company um, and they work for the company all summer long. I am pleased to say you know, I was, that we will be continuing the Startup Academy this summer, even though it will be virtual. Um, if any of you are from California, or actually you don't even have to be from California at this point to know about the stay at home order. But um, my son is actually in tech um, in California, and he's been at, on stay at home much longer than we have. So 
it's not unusual out there for people to work remotely. And luckily we were able to retain all of our um, startups that had agreed to take our students for the summer, except that it will be a remote experience because of the pandemic. But hopefully this will all be over um, by next summer and we'll get our students back out there for this 10 week experience in San Francisco. Great, uh, thank you. There are um, a couple of questions about students, uh, from students who are uh, undecided. Um, Dean Flowers, what advice would you give to a student who's undecided in your college? And then maybe as a follow-up, Dean DeWorth, someone wants to know um, about how students uh, explore the different areas of engineering, if they know they want engineering, but they're not sure what kind and when do they need to make that decision? I would say explore. You're going to have a lot of opportunities, a lot of fascinating topics. Um, one thing we have at Lehigh is what's called a freshman seminar. So I teach one, it's called Chemistry and National Issues. But what always fascinates me is I have journalism majors or students who aren't necessarily scientists in there. And I think they're really there to explore the opportunities. You can take classes in theater, political science, the sciences. Um, but I also think these uh, freshman seminars are really a nice way to maybe try something or explore a little, maybe you wanna push yourself a little bit or try something you haven't had the opportunity to explore. And so you don't really have to declare a major uh, in your first two years in, in the College of Arts and Sciences. And so um, I know it's a little bit, uh, flexibility is a little bit different from college to college but you really do have an opportunity to explore a wide range of classes. And I actually recommend that you do that. Sometimes we have preconceived notions about what we wanna do. And uh, many of the students I've encountered end up doing something very different than they initially thought they would do when they got to uh, Lehigh. So the students in the Rawson College have, don't declare a major until the end of their first year. And we have students who come in and say, I know I want to be a bioengineer, an environmental engineer. And to them, I say, that's okay. Still see what, what else is, is out there. And then we have students who come in and say, I want to be an engineer, but I'm not sure where. And so we're actually redoing our, our first year core curriculum. And the big focus is around project, but interdisciplinary project-based learning built into the curriculum. So we're back to experiential learning again. And we put that in the first year so our students can not only see how the different majors play out, but they see it in, in an integrated interdisciplinary context so they can start to understand the relationship between majors as well. And so by the end of that first year, they've really seen in depth how to do problem solving across, a maybe not across all 11 of our undergraduate uh, engineering degrees, but certainly across a broad swath, and hopefully that helps them really figure out where, where their passion lies and where their interests lie. Yeah, I, I, could, I would love to echo um, exactly what my colleagues were, are saying. It worries me when I see a student just so dead set on just there's only one path and I'm going to go down one path. This is why you come to college. This is why you come to a university like Lehigh where so many things are open to you that you might not have even known existed. Probably my favorite example is supply chain. That, you know, when you're in high school, you might not even know what supply chain management is, but you get here and you say, wow, this is such an opportunity and it puts together everything that I like in life. If you close yourself off from that, you might not find it. So I say, just keep your options open for as long as you can. All right, great, thank you. Um, I also have lots of questions on the category around student and faculty interaction. Um, folks are curious to know what they should expect from faculty, what faculty will expect from them. Are the classes taught by professors is one of the questions and how often do they interact with, with teaching assistants? Dean, Dean Phillips, I see. You're, <laughs> I also think Dean Witt, you, you're, I know that your focus is, is, is very close interaction with your uh, small new environment between your faculty and the, and the students will be starting. So why don't you jump in after Dean Phillips? 
But I just, I, I, I want to say that our faculty care so much about the students in ways that, that just is so marvelous and, and so unusual for a research university. If anybody wants to learn more about our faculty, I believe that tomorrow, I'm sorry, Saturday at noon, there is another, um, what do you call these um, webinars or, or chats that, that, they, that is happening, where our department chairs and members of our faculty will actually be there. It stuns me to think that highly research active faculty are taking out time on a Saturday to talk with prospective freshmen. I'm so proud and thrilled of the interaction that they have with their students. And I will now pass it to Whitney. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll say that, um, that all of our faculty members uh, have very robust research programs and um, all of them are very, very eager to get students involved. They're very committed to um, mentorship. Uh, they've all been mentored very well and they uh, understand the importance of mentorship um, and understand the importance of um, having the light bulb go off and, um, and having that aha moment. Um, so, you know, and really, you know, you can't, you can't have that unless you get people involved in what you're doing and, and, and in training them. So um, our faculty are very committed to that and they're very, very excited to get undergraduates involved in their work. All right, great, thank you. Um, so we're at our, our hour. I would like to squeeze in a couple of additional uh, questions if we can, just because there are so many, and I'm sorry that we're not gonna get to, um, to all of them. Again, we're trying, I'm trying to address broad categories and, and combine the things that are asked most often. Um, but to, to depart a little bit from the academic side, and again, the, those student life questions and so forth, you can go to the admitted student community email us at the admissions office and we'll have, be happy to address those. But there are a lot of questions about life outside of the classroom and off campus. Um, and so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll ask you to, to answer a little bit about um, Bethlehem, in, including, uh, you know, so they're curious about your thoughts on, on Bethlehem, but there's a specific question. What is your favorite place to eat off campus? I'll throw that out to whoever wants to start. That's a tough I'll uh, start. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, UNT is one of my favorites. There's great food and my, my kids love bubble tea. So that's our, that's our go-to. And um, uh, Jenny's uh, is also another favorite, um, a Malaysian restaurant. So um, lots of great places to eat. My favorite is Reiki Ramen. It is, it's spectacular. <laughs> so if, if you're on a little bit lower budget, I recommend Tulum. They make great burritos and their best one's called a Beth Mex uh, burrito. And it's fantastic. Oh, and you want to go a little more upscale. The guacamole with bacon at Urbano on the north side. Okay. Oh, I got to get involved in this. I, I like the olive branch. I, li I like the uh, Mediterranean food. <laughs> and Steve? If you want to go a little more upscale on the south side, and I have to say, my wife and I live just a few blocks from campus, so we spend a lot of time on the south side, but, uh, but I'm a great fan of Social Still, which is a little farther from campus, but is just, they have, they have great food, and it's actually a local distillery as well, so it's interesting. Uh, uh, and I just... A favorite of the students is the Goosey Gander. I wondered if somebody was going to mention the goose. Yeah, I mean, you go there, there's a line out the door every day at lunch. And uh, Tony, who runs the goose, knows everyone. It's amazing. And so, that, that again, that it's is... An, it's an institution. Yeah, okay. So, um, we'll close maybe with one more um, 
probably not academic question, but maybe, I don't know. Um, and, I, and again, I know there are over 100 questions that, that have come in. Um, but I thought this was re really kind of a neat question. What's your favorite Lehigh tradition? And, and I'm going to put President Simon on the spot again to, to start with that. Uh, I like the rally. I like the uh, freshman rally and the uh, sense of spirit and community it brings and that you get to see alumni from every class for the last 50 years. It's just uh, one of those high energy events that starts off the academic year. I my, else like to offer an opinion? Yeah, my favorite is when the uh, Marching 97 comes around the day before the Lehigh Lafayette football game. Fine. And it's awesome. And you'll hear them coming from a distance and they'll come right into the classes and stand on the desks and play. Um, every once in a while, if I know it's someone's birthday that day, they'll break into happy birthday in their class for them. And uh, it, it's just a fan, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic day. It's a lot of fun. I feel like it's one of those clowns in a small car thing. I can't believe how many marching band students get packed into my office. And they let me play with them too. So being an ex-marching band guy, that's been a lot of fun. Well, a lateral arabesque from that one is the way that the students hang out the bed sheets um, on Lehigh Lafayette weekend. They are, the humor is incredible. I mean, they're, they're headed for stand-up sometimes. So for people who aren't familiar, the tradition, the week of the Lehigh Lafayette football game, the students hang bed sheets with funny sayings or uh, things to, to roast our, our rivals at, at Lafayette, et cetera. And it's, it's a fun tradition. So. All right, well, um, we've come to, again, beyond the end of the hour. We have far more questions than we could, uh, could get to. Uh, and I'm sorry for that. Um, I, the, the questions were phenomenal. I just, I, I, I'm not surprised from students who were admitted to Lehigh, but just great, great questions. Um, and, and again, if we didn't have a chance to, to answer your question, I know there were questions about social life and student life on campus, about housing, um, some very specific questions about advanced placement credit and that kind of thing. Please join us in the admitted student community. Um, you all uh, got an invitation to that after, after uh, you got your acceptance notification. Um, if you need help, uh, you know, signing in or, or joining that community, just email us or, or call us at the admissions office. Reach out to your admissions officer. Uh, we're all listed on the website. You can see uh, it, it's distributed by geography. So depending where you live, just our email addresses are there. Um, we've made our decisions and we couldn't be happier with the decisions that we've made. And we know you have important decisions to make as well. For some of you, um, you know, those decisions are about things like study abroad and research and how to engage. And for some of you, those decisions are whether to accept the offer of admission from Lehigh or some other school. And we want to try to help you wherever you are with whatever decisions you have to make. Um, and to that end, uh, through our admitted student community on uh, a week from Saturday, the April 25th, we are uh, hosting a series of events through the admitted stu student community like we have for the last uh, nearly month, but we're going to put them all together in a single day on a Saturday. Um, and we're, we're uh, calling it our admitted student day, although in my office it's being uh, referenced as decide a palooza so that we can help you with your decisions. Um, so join us for that. There'll be all kinds of opportunities to talk to representatives from uh, study abroad and from each of the colleges and from housing and so on and so forth. Um, but please don't um, let your questions go unanswered. Thank you so much for the great, great questions. Made my job real easy. Uh, I wanna thank our, our deans and President Simon for, um, uh, for being a part of this panel uh, this evening and for their endless support. Uh, of our students. Um, thank you so much. Uh, best of luck to everyone and uh, go Lehigh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.